Howdy everyone, it's Sam. Welcome back to Wobble and Joy Sports. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider to like the content and subscribe to the channel. But if you are a regular around these year parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. Last weekend, I got myself six straight correct tips and then Sunday did not turn into a very fun day. Me finishing with the correct tips. So in total, six last week, equaling nine correct tips so far for the 2024 NRL season out of a possible 16. Round number three is multicultural round and oh my goodness, there are some mighty games this weekend. As a matter of fact, the entire round is shaping up as an absolute beauty. Let's get into the Ace High Tip Show. Game one of round number three starts on Thursday night football from Blue Bet Stadium, the 2023 grand final rematch, the Panthers versus the Broncos. On sports bet, the Panthers are $1.33, the Broncos are $3.37. This will be the 62nd match between the two clubs. Brisbane still have the overall head-to-head -head record at 35-25 to with one draw in there as well. Five of the past seven games between the Panthers and the Broncos have been decided between that 1-12 to bracket since 2020. Uh, Brisbane, they got their first win at Blue Bet Stadium in round one last season. Uh, their first victory at the venue since the year 2008. There are team list changes for both of these sides. Uh, let's get into the Penrith side now. Uh, Lindsay Smith starts in Jersey 10. James Fisher Harris is out uh, for the next month or so with injury. The interchange reads Dane Laurie makes his Panthers return in Jersey number 14. Matt Eisenhuth, Liam Henry and and Luke Garner is in Jersey 17, and Sonny Luke has been named as 18th man. Uh, the big news, the team news now for uh, this matchup does come in the way of uh, the Brisbane Broncos. So into their team we go. Uh, Jock Madden comes in for Adam Reynolds. Ezra Mann remains as the 5'8". The Ford pack, uh, first of all, Corey Jensen. This will be his 100th first grade match, so congratulations to him. Payne Haas has been named despite doubt uh, for the past couple of days, uh, but he has been named, which is massive. The interchange uh, is Smoothie, Baker, Hetherington, and Tapa'u. And once again, Mr. Willison is hanging around there in jersey number 18. Adam Reynolds is a massive loss. Jock Madden uh, is a fine young player. We just don't see enough of him, obviously. But from what I've seen, he does not do too badly. Uh, the Panthers last weekend... Yeah, you couldn't say that they were the better team inside the first half an hour. Thereabouts, maybe there's an argument to be made that they weren't the better side in that first half overall. Um, so they're still getting back on track, but they're getting back on track. So I'm going to tip the Penrith Panthers to win this game 1-12. to Reynolds is a massive loss, um, but that's one cog missing from the rest of this Almighty Brisbane Broncos machine. Um, it will be close. Um, five of the past seven have been decided by 1 to 12. I'm going to go Panthers 1 to 12 this weekend. Shifting into Friday Night Football now, and game number one is from Apollo Project Stadium in Christchurch. The Warriors versus the Canberra Raiders on sports bet. The Warriors are $1.44. The Raiders are $2.80. This will be the 51st match between the two. The Raiders have the record at 26 to 24. And if you told me at the start of the season that this game would have a team that would be 0 and 2 and the other team would be 2 and 0, it would I would have chosen very differently to what is actually happening this Friday night. The Raiders are 2 and 0. The Warriors are 0 and 2. This shapes up as an absolute beauty. Um, this will be Canberra Raiders first ever match in Christchurch. Uh, the Warriors, they won both of the matches that happened last season against the Canberra Raiders. The Raiders last won 
in New Zealand in 2019. But this is where I go deeper now for the New Zealand Warriors side of things. The Warriors, since the year 2001, have started taking games across the New Zealand country, as they should, as you do. This will be the 31st match that they have done so since the year 2001. Their record is eight wins, one draw, and 21 losses when they take a home game on the road across country New Zealand. Not good. It goes a little bit further than that. The Raiders have been a part of that statistic twice. Two games the Warriors and Raiders have played across country New Zealand away from Mount Smart Stadium. The Raiders have won on both of those occasions. One coming in the year 2003. Uh, the other one coming uh, in 2018, coming in 2018 or 2016, I should say. So there's a couple of those stats that are going in the way of the Canberra Raiders. Oh man, do I dare? Well, let's quickly have a look at the team list now for both of these sides. So the New Zealand Warriors 1-7 to seven are unchanged. The Ford Pack is unchanged. The interchange reads Lassic, Arle, Bantiafoa, and Dylan Walker with Adam Pompey in a jersey number 18. The Canberra Raiders now, uh, Nick Chotrich uh, comes in uh, onto the wing. Xavier Savage maintains his spot. Timoko and Hopawadi are the two centres there. Uh, and then into the forward pack, uh, Elliot Whitehead returns. He starts uh, in jersey number 12. That's a massive inclusion. And then the interchange reads Starling, Gula, Hosking, and Basami Solo with James Schiller as Jersey 18. DWZ for the New Zealand Warriors plays his 50th first grade game, and Hudson Young plays his 100th first grade game this weekend. So big kudos to both of those gentlemen. Tough game to tip, man. I'm going to go the New Zealand Warriors 1-12. to The Raiders went there last season and nearly pipped them in a golden point thriller. Uh, so a lot of these guys would know how to beat the New Zealand Warriors in New Zealand. They came very, very close last season. I'm going to go the New Zealand Warriors. I just don't think that they will allow themselves. I don't think they're going to go 0-3 and three to start 2024. But this Raiders outfit, man, they can do it. They can beat this Warriors side. And if they do, people really better start believing in the green machine, bro. Um, but I just... I don't know. I just... I gotta go to the New Zealand Warriors. I just don't think they're gonna start the year zero and three. Raiders will get their first loss of 2024. Warriors one to twelve for me. And the main event of Friday night football, and in a lot of people's eyes, this is the main event of the entire weekend. Easts versus Souths, the Roosters versus the Rabbitohs for the 232nd time. And the Sydney Roosters have the overall record at 120 to 106 with five draws thrown in there. Since 2020, South Sydney have won five of the past nine encounters, but they lost both matches to the Roosters in 2023. On Sportsbet, we've got the Sydney Roosters as a $1.70 favourites. The Rabbitohs are $2.15. There's, there's a little bit of meat on that bone for the South Sydney Rabbitohs just quietly. Uh, going into the team list news, just having a rolling eye over it. Uh, Sandon Smith comes in for Luke Keary in jersey number six. Uh, the Ford pack now, uh, Nat Butcher, Tupanua and Victor Radley is the starting back row. Interchange, Watson, White, May and Angus Crichton. Now, I believe this might be Angus Crichton's 100th game. Yes, it will be Angus Crichton's 100th game. Uh, for the Sydney Roosters. So he's been chomping at the bit in New South Wales Cup. He gets his opportunity against his old club as well. So congratulations to Angus Crichton and also Jared Wiria Hargreaves, who plays game 300 this Friday night against the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Going into the team list now for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, the big inclusion, Mr. Jack Whiten makes his South Sydney debut with jersey number three. He partners Isaiah Tass, in the centres, and Tane Milne has been named as that other winger. The halves is Cody Walker and Dean Hawkins. Lachlan Ilias, unfortunately, has been dropped. The forward pack now, uh, Totola, Mowali, and Cook start in the front row. Uh, and Kolomitangi, Jacob Host, and Cameron Murray are the back row. The interchange reads Havili, Duncan, Kepi, 
and Tom Burgess and Michael Chiercam has been named as jersey number 18. Um, big milestone as well for the South Sydney Rabbitohs too. Cameron Murray plays game 150 against the Sydney Roosters. Again, this just all lines up to be an absolute beauty uh, for uh, war between the Sydney Roosters and the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Uh, Roosters, admittedly, I didn't see too much of the game. I was out and about. Um, but from what I hear, from what I've seen, reading the stats and whatnot, they were they were very, very clunky. Uh, even though we, I think it looked like we were the footy for a bit, but they did not complete. They played a little bit like the Sydney Roosters of 2023. Meanwhile, the South Sydney Rabbitohs, man, uh, it's only been two games. They are that team that can just go 10 in a row, bro. They've got the team to do something like that. So I'm not writing them off at all. But they were diabolical last weekend against the Brisbane Broncos, man. Except for a 10-minute period there where it started dominating and then something didn't go their way and then they just collapsed, bro. And they've been in the media a lot. There's been that talk from Josh Mansour that was pretty full-on. That was a pretty full-on conversation Josh Mansour dropped on James Graham uh, the other day. Uh, are the South Sydney Rabbitohs really going to go 0-3? Luke Keery, I don't think he had the best game last week against Manly regardless, but he is still a loss. And now Sam Walker uh, really needs to step up to the plate. He has stepped up to the plate before. They really do need him because Tedesco can't do it on his own. And while Sandon Smith has done some really nice things uh, for uh, the Roosters, um, yeah, this halves pairing for the Roosters does give me pause for concern about tipping them. Uh, meanwhile, if the same could be said with Mr. Dean Hawkins coming in for such a huge game Friday night prime time against the arch enemy. This is split down the middle. And there's something telling me that I should tip the Sydney Roosters out there at Allianz Stadium. This is a really difficult game to tip. I'm going to go the Sydney Roosters just. There's just something telling me about the Roosters to win this game 1-12. to But boy, howdy. I would not be surprised if the Rabbitohs got up and won this game against their arch nemesis, considering they have also had the better of them since the year 2020, winning five of the past nine games against them. So Sydney Roosters, Eastern Suburbs to win this game 1-12 to in my opinion. Super Saturday has three games. Game number one is from Belmore. The Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs versus the Gold Coast Titans on Sportsbet. The Bulldogs are $1.85 favourites. The Titans are $2 outsiders. This will be the 24th match between the two clubs and the Titans who have the head-to-head -head record at 12 wins to 11. Since 2020, Gold Coast have won four of the past six encounters against the Bulldogs. But those two losses came in Sydney in back-to-back -back seasons as well uh, in 2022 and 2023. Uh, Gold Coast, they have played only once at Belmore Sports Oval and they won that game. That was in the year 2018, won it convincingly 32 points to 10. Uh, the Gold Coast's record in Sydney against the Bulldogs, it's okay. Uh, they've won three times, they've lost four times. Uh, so they're looking to even things up this weekend against the Bulldogs. Going into the team list now for the Canterbury-Bankstown Bulldogs, uh, one through to seven is unchanged. The forward pack, Liam Knight starts in jersey 10. Jamin Salmon is the lock, meaning interchange is Kurt Mann, Sam Hughes, Josh Curran, and Curtis Morin. Bronson Sherry is floating around with jersey 18 on his back. Let's look at this Titans side who were very disappointing in round number one. They've had the bye and now they're going to come out firing, hopefully for their fans anyway. Let's see what this team list looks like. Uh, Keanu Kinney at fullback. AKP and Sami are the wingers. AJ Brimson and Brian Kelly are the centres. Foran and Boyd are the halves pairing. The first time we see Foran in 2024. The forward pack is very much unch uh, unchanged. Uh, Jamin Joloff starts in the lock position, jersey 13. Uh, Khalees Haas and Beaufort Fermor are the uh, edge second rowers. The interchange reads Verrills, Liu, Aaron Clark, and Keenan Palacia. And you've got Joe Simpson in at jersey number 18. The Dogs, while they are zero and two, they have shown a little bit more mongrel. Um, in the past couple of weeks than what they showed for the second half 
of 2023. So I've got to give them their flowers. They really stuck it to the Cronulla Sharks last Friday night in a very entertaining uh, game of footy. Gold Coast Titans, they're sort of the same as South Sydney. They have their injuries for feeder. Jaden Campbell are out. So you do got to give them that pass mark that you do with South Sydney, realising that Whiten and Graham and Munro have been out for them. Uh, even though it's only one performance, they were they were extremely flat against the Dragons in round number one. Surely they're not going to be as flat. I, I'm going to go the dogs at home. Um, I, I'm going to go the dogs at home. I think the Titans, uh, maybe that second round by uh, won't have done them the world of good. Maybe they're chomping at the bit. Maybe they've just been living on raw meat for the past two weeks um, and they're ready to absolutely destroy the Bulldogs. But there's just something telling me that the Bulldogs, they've so they're sort of working their way to a Belmore win Saturday afternoon against the Gold Coast Titans. I'm going to go the Bulldogs to win this game 1-12. to the second game on Super Saturday emanates from Netstrata Jubilee Stadium in Cogra. The Dragons host the North Queensland Cowboys. On Sportsbet, it is the Cowboys who are favourites at $1.40. The Dragons are $2.99 on Sportsbet. This will be the 39th match between the two. The Cowboys have the head-to-head -head record at 21-17. to North Queensland have won four in a row against the St. George Illawarra Dragons. The Dragons last defeated North Queensland in 2021, but have not beaten North Queensland in New South Wales since the year 2019. North Queensland last played at Cogra in the year 2022, and they picked up the dub that day, a big Sunday afternoon win against the Dragons when they were in red-hot touch. But that was their first victory at that venue since 2003. So it is still an unhappy stomping ground for the Cowboys, is Cogra. Let's go into the teamless news now. So for the St. George Illawarra Dragons, uh, the back line is unchanged. The Ford pack, DeBellin, Marshke and Laurie. Luciana Leilua starts in jersey number 11. Jaden Sua and Tom Eisenhuth are the back row. Oh man. Luciano Lolua, look out. The interchange, Molheisen, Molo, RFM, and Viliami Fafita with Jersey 17. Going into the Cowboys now, uh, 1 through to 7 are unchanged. The forward pack, Kuli Kefu Fenafuiaki is in for Highland Luki, who will be out for the next 7 or 8 weeks with syndesmosis. Godspeed to you, mate. Fair dinkum. Uh, the interchange reads Granville, Neen McIntyre, and Jack Gajewski has been named with Jersey 17. Uh, he's also coming up against his old side. I was anticipating maybe a Thomas McKayley would come in, uh, maybe just for a little bit more size. I mean, Jack Gajewski is a big bugger himself, but I thought maybe Tom McKayley would come in. Uh, Dragons. The wheels fell off uh, in round number two against the Dolphins, losing 38 nil. They were deplorable, and the Cowboys were just as deplorable in that first half. 11 errors inside the first half. It was only 12 nil though, and the Cowboys, they... I don't think they copped a rocket from Todd Payton, but Todd Payton looked at him with his steely eyes, man, and said, you, you come out and rectify things. And that's what they did. They ended up winning in Golden Point, mind you, but they ended up winning through the boot of Chad Townsend. Uh, and without... Chad Townsend last weekend, without Tom Dearden, uh, we don't win that game. Uh, Valentine Holmes himself has admitted to having a bit of a shocker as well, uh, but I thought our forward pack did better as the game wore on. McLean, Cotter as well, and Finifuiaki looked dangerous every single time uh, he went near that ball or had the ball in his hands. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how Jack Gajewski goes uh, this weekend. He is now, what, our third or fourth string second rower now. Um, but I like the work that he does. I like the work that he gets through. Uh, Zach Lomax off the top of the dome, he's going to be coming up against Murray Tell Lungi. Uh, Murray Tell Lungi, I think he's been good to start the season. He's coming up against arguably the most in-form winger of the competition. Zach Lomax is having a good start to the season uh, for 2024. Even though he got pumped last weekend, Zach Lomax still had a lot of good things in his game last weekend, just in glimpses. Uh, the battle of Sloan versus Drinkwater. Drinkwater should should win that in a knockout. Uh, in the Ford pack, yes, Luciano Le Luai versus the old team, the Cowboys, uh, through controversial circumstances. That 
hopefully should bring out a fair bit of spice. Uh, it is going to be Nene versus Lay Lewis, so it's going to be sort of the old bull versus the young bull in that regard. Um, but down that right edge defensively for the St. George Illawarra Dragons, Jaden Sewer, Ben Hunt, that's where the Dolphins absolutely steamrolled them uh, in that game. That's going to be the edge that Kuli Kefifinifuiaki marks up on. That's also Murray Taolungi's wing as well. That edge for the Dragons was diabolical against, that, uh, against the Dolphins. I was there to see it, and I couldn't stop it between Ben Hunt and Jaden Sewer. That right edge defensively, better hold on tight because Cooley's coming for you. And I think Valentine Holmes and Murray Taolungi might get themselves on the try scorer's sheet as well. So Cooley, Val, and Murray Taolungi, I think they're in for it. Also, if you want to, ha if you really want to go wild, well, not wild, but Kyle Felt has scored five tries in the past four games against the St. George Illawarra Dragons, and he only needs one more to crack the all-time Cowboys try scoring record. Cowboys 13 plus. The third game on Super Saturday is from Leichhardt Oval. The Tigers versus the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. On Sportsbet, the Sharks are $1.23. The Tigers are $4.20. This will be the 37th match between the West Tigers and the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. And it is the Tigers who have the overall head-to-head -head record at 18 to 17 with one draw thrown in there as well. However, Cronulla have won four in a row against the West Tigers. They've won 10 of the past 11 against the West Tigers. This will be the ninth match at Leichhardt for the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks up against the West's Tigers, and the record is 5-3 and three to the West Tigers. Uh, Cronulla, they last played at Leichhardt in 2019. They won on that occasion. Um, they also won on another occasion uh, in between 2019 and 2014, but that loss came in 2014. Their last loss at Leichhardt came in the year 2014. So for the West Tigers now, uh, a little bit of change. Justin Olin makes his club debut in its centre with jersey number four. Uh, for Atape, Staines and Tupo uh, remain in the back line. The forward pack now uh, remains untouched. In the interchange reads, Jaden Sullivan in jersey 14, Seifarth, Twal and Samuel Afainu with Asu Kapoa in a jersey 18. For the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, 1-7, to seven, they're unchanged. The forward pack, I think there's a little bit of movement there. Toby Rudolph, Bra Braley, Corfusi, Jack Williams, Teague Wilton and Cameron McInnes. And the interchange reads for Nukin, Royce Hunt, Billy Burns, and Thomas Hazelton with Kyle Iro in a jersey number 18. Cronulla Sharks 13 plus. There are two games on Sunday, and game number one is from Combank Stadium the Parramatta Eels versus the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles. On Sportsbet, the Eels are favourites, slight favourites at $1.88. The Sea Eagles are $1.96. Wow, I wasn't anticipating Eels to be the favourites in this game. Uh, this will be the 150th match between the Eels and the Sea Eagles. And it is Manly who lead 88 to 57 with four draws thrown in there as well. However, Eels, they have won three of the past four matches against the Sea Eagles. This will be the sixth match at Combank between the Eels and the Sea Eagles. And Seagulls have only beaten Eels once at the venue. A uh, couple of massive milestones in this game. Regan Campbell-Gillard, he will play his 200th first grade game this weekend. And Taniella Paseca plays game number 100. Going into the team list now for the Parramatta Eels. And it's Harper, Penasini, Blaze Talangi starts in the centre. His first grade debut, congratulations. And Sean Russell. Um... The forward pack is unchanged, and the interchange reads Luca Moretti, Ryan Madison, Joe Offerhengawi, and Kelma Tuolangi has been named in Jersey 17. I thought he was friggin' cooked. Maybe he might be a late exclusion, um, and therefore Offerhiki Ogden will come in, or maybe even a Brendan Hands, maybe, but that, that's surprising to see Kelma Tuolangi named in Jersey 17, man. Uh, going into the Manly Seagulls now, uh, Raymond uh, Tuamalo Vega has been named in jersey number two. Uh, Jackson Polo remains on, well, not remains on one wing, but he's on the one wing. Kola and Garrick are in the centres, so Tommy Talau would have succumbed to uh, HIA issue. So uh, RTV and Jackson Polo are back 
Uh, and so those are the two changes there. And the Ford pack reads uh, very much the same as last weekend. So that Ford pack is unchanged. And the interchange reads Lawton, Waddell, Bullymore, and Nathan Brown with Jake Arthur named as Jersey number 18. Alrighty, so there's a little bit of shifting. Uh, just, just a little bit of movement in the back line for the Manly Seagulls. Um, they were very good. Uh, well, very good might be a little bit of a stretch, uh, considering that there are a lot of errors, a lot of penalties in that game in the victory against the Sydney Roosters. But from what I've heard, it's a game that I did not see, unfortunately. But it is a game where I've heard that the Sydney Roosters beat themselves. Um, but to take nothing away from Manly, they made a 70-odd metre break uh, in the first set of the game. Parramatta Eels, they were arguably the best side in that first half against the Penrith Panthers. And then just, I've got to be honest, there's something that that is, it's like Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses are knocking on that door. Um, and while Dylan Brown had a couple of nice passes in him, I'm not saying they were bad last weekend. There's just something missing from Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses so far in 2024. If it wasn't for the likes of a Clinton Gutherson, if it wasn't for Joey Lussick, for example, who have been the better spine players in 2024, in my opinion, maybe maybe they might be a little bit more worse off. I'm not saying they would have lost to the Bulldogs because the Bulldogs definitely beat themselves that day too and the Eels were good. But just, I don't know, I, I know Mitchell Moses might be carrying a bit of a niggling injury at the moment. If so, just rest him. It's early in the season. Um, but yeah, Dylan Brown Moses, I just, I, I was hoping to see a little bit more from them and it just hasn't been the case so far. Maybe it happens this weekend. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why. They, they, they would have taken a lot out of the effort that they put in last weekend. They know that they can beat Penrith. Um, I think they'll be better for it. They, they, yeah. Um, oh, this is tough. I'm going to go to the Parramatta Eels. I didn't think I would tip the Eels, but uh, my spider senses are tingling over the Parramatta Eels. So <clears throat> I'm going to go to the Parramatta Eels to win this game 1-12. to And the final game of multicultural round, the final game of round three, is from McDonald Jones Stadium. Newcastle Knights versus the Melbourne Storm. And on Sportsbet, the Knights are the favourites, the slight favourites at $1.88, the Storm are $1.96 outsiders. This will be the 47th battle between the two. It is the Storm who dominate with 30 to 16. Newcastle, they got their first victory against the Storm last year since, well, I think 2014, I think it was. It was their first victory against the Storm in 11 or, 11 or 12 attempts. Um, and this weekend, they've got a massive opportunity ahead of them. Let's look at the team list now. So the Newcastle Knights are one through to seven. I think that's unchanged. No, no, actually no. Uh, so Tyson Gamble is in five eighth, and Jack Cogger is in the halfback. So Jackson Hastings, I'm not sure if there's an injury there, um, but Jackson Hastings is out for the Newcastle Knights, and it's Jack Cogger who is in. The interchange is Jaden Braley. Whoa, Jaden Braley returns in jersey 14. Best of luck to you, mate. I'm touching wood for you, bro. Uh, Daniel Saifidi, Jack Hetherington, and Jed Cartwright uh, round out the interchange. And, well, that's that's a lot of uh, changes there. Uh, Jackson Hastings, uh, jersey number 22. Um, bloody hell. Uh, so, wasn't anticipating Knights to have as much changes as they do because I thought it would be the Melbourne Storm that would have all the changes. So for the Melbourne Storm, Pappenhausen is at fullback, Warbrick and Coates are the wingers, Smith and Meany are the centres, Pazet and Wishart are the halves combination. Jerome Hughes uh, has been suspended for uh, contrary conduct towards a referee. I think the Storm are fighting that, so maybe just just watch this space or maybe Hughes might be a late inclusion for the Storm. The Ford pack uh, is Tui Kamikamitha, Josh King, Joe Chan, Eli Katoa and Trent Liero. Christian Welch, not there for the Melbourne Storm. Uh, the interchange reads Kane Bradley in Jersey 14. That might be a club debut. Uh, Tepai Marola, Chris Lewis and Alec McDonald. It's Joe Chan and Eli Katoa have been shining lights in the second row. They've been really, really good for the Melbourne Storm. It's just that young Jack Howarth, who's only 20, 21 years old, and he's on 600K, 
just still cannot get into that freaking team, man. <sighs> Hastings out is big, but Cogger suits in, will fit in very, very nicely uh, at halfback. Greg Marzu is a loss, though, um, without his power coming up against either Coates or Will Warbrick. That's going to be lost big time, especially Tawala. Not a small body, but he's not Marzu. And Tom Jenkins coming up against uh, Will Warbrick or Xavier Coates. He's got his work cut out for him, the young man Tom Jenkins, but he does come from that Penrith Panthers system. This is just a must-win game for Newcastle Knights. It's it's round three, and we're looking at must-win territory. Um, without Pizet and Wishart, mind you, both players have proven themselves over the past 18 months. The Knights just have to do it, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to tip the Newcastle Knights to win this game 1-12. to But Ryan Pappenhausen and Harry Grant are going to do everything possible, bro. It's You've still got Pappenhausen and Grant, and that means you're always a freaking chance. Um, would I be surprised if the Storm won? No. But I'm going to tip the Newcastle Knights 1-12. to Yo, thank you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I can get you to consider to like the content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, if not, share it around if you are a subscriber. Uh, thank you very much for the continued support. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Enjoy multicultural round. Hope your team wins, except for the St. George Illawarra Dragons. I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Take care. Adios.